Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Magical Memories with Maddie, the podcast. Today's episode is going to discuss another fun land in theme parks, and today we're going to be talking about Avengers Campus. Avengers Campus is located over at Disney California Adventure Park at the Disneyland Resort, and I have only been there once, so my knowledge is not as extreme as some of these other places, but it is knowledge nevertheless. So let's get started. So the first thing you need to know about Avengers Campus is it is still pretty new of an area. So um, the stuff is very like small of an area too, because it's also at Disneyland DCA, if you will. It's not a very big area like Galaxy's Edge or the Wizarding World. It's much smaller in scale. Um, so yeah. Before they opened Avengers Campus, they actually initially just opened a ride. And the ride was the Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. Now this ride was just a takeover of Tower of Terror uh, over in California Adventure Park. And they wanted to do it within a year, so they did this. And then a few years later, they opened Avengers Campus. Avengers Campus is near Cars Land if you've ever been and you haven't been in a while. Because Cars Land has been there for a while. It's like literally right next to it. Um... And it's a lot of fun, so let's uh, talk about it. So there are two attractions in Avengers Campus. Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout and Web Slingers. Now, Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout, as I've already stated, is literally just Tower of Terror, but rethemed to be Guardians of the Galaxy. Now, this is a smaller scale of Tower of Terror compared to the one in Orlando where they have four elevators. They only have two here in California. And... Um, is Guardians themed, so it's slightly different. I personally enjoy the Guardians version more. It's just my personal preference. Um, some people don't, some people like the Tower of Terror theme more. I don't, I don't like that you're literally dropping in pitch blackness on Tower of Terror, whereas Guardians, like it's fun, you hear music, you know, like you, you feel like you're more about having fun than you are about like dying. Cause like, you know, it's all about going to the Twilight Zone and Tower of Terror, whereas Guardians, you're just trying to save the Guardians from the Collector, which is the storyline. Web Slingers, however, is all, all new thought of ride um, that I don't think replaced anything. I don't know. This whole area replaced the Bugs Life, so I don't really know. It was a Bugs Life area. I don't really know what it replaced wise, like ride wise and stuff. I never went before last year. So if you guys know, you can let me know. Let me know. I'd love to know the history of this. Uh, I just know I think it was a Bugs Life area that it replaced. Um, but Web Singers, uh, so similar to Toy Story Mania or Buzz Lightyear, where you shoot things, you are shooting things. But instead, you're just doing it with your hands. So you do your hands like this and you shoot. If you're watching the video, you can see me. If you're not watching, um, I'm doing the Spider-Man like hand thing that he does in the Spider-Man movie, and I'm shooting at things. Uh, because this ride, basically what happens is Peter Parker, Tom Holland's Peter Parker, makes this thing called a Spider-Bot, and it keeps self-replicating, and he has way too many of them, and you have to help him stop all the Spider-Bots because they're going absolutely insane around uh, Avengers Campus, mainly Web, which is created by Tony for Peter. It's, um, it stands for something, I forgot, but it's, it's like Peter Parker's little like company, if you will. This is kind of a cute ride. You can actually buy a spider bot. I even saw them on the Shop Disney store, as well as like the um, tactical upgrades that you can get, which I think is pretty cool. And for this ride, you can also buy, um, it's like an arm thing, or like a power-up thing, almost, if you will, like a power-up shooter to make your webs do something cooler. Um, and you can buy a bunch of different kinds of those. They have, like, the Iron Man Repulsors, they have some web ones, really cool stuff. Now, throughout the land of Avengers Campus, you're more than likely to run into an Avenger, because instead of, like, Disney World, where characters are isolated to an area... Characters in Avengers Campus, or, well, the Avengers, are basically roaming around, and you can walk up to them, you can talk to them, you can take pictures with them. Um, most of the time, they're, like, 
on a mission they gotta go i didn't get to take a picture with captain america because he like had to go but he let me talk to him while he autographed my book which was really cool um i saw like ant-man i saw captain america i saw loki I saw thor I saw black panther sure he black panther um I saw spider-man um now some of these characters they won't sign off the bat like spider-man he does not sign after his show you have to wait till after 4 p.m after his last show in order to get a signature so i didn't get his um but you can meet these other avengers all throughout the day they're out from 9 a.m 9 p.m whatever throughout the day the only one that doesn't sign is iron man because tony doesn't like to be handed things that's that's literally the best reasoning i've ever heard for why a character can't sign something like genius like they literally worked into the marvel aspect of the character and like why wouldn't why wouldn't Iron Man want a signature? Oh, because he doesn't like being handed things. Like, literally the most genius description I've ever heard. Now, within all the characters, you can also see shows. So sometimes you won't be able to meet the characters that are in the shows until after the shows are over. Like the Spider-Man, they have a show with Black Panther and um, Black Widow. You probably can't meet those two until after their shows are done for the day. Um, you can see the Dora Milaje throughout the day, the Warriors of Wakanda show. Uh, I don't think you can ever meet them. Uh, Doctor Strange meets before his show because he has all the way until nighttime shows and I don't think he comes out again after that. But I don't know because his, his nighttime show is pretty late. I would assume that that's the case. Um, which I really wanted to see his show at nighttime but the line was way too long. Now, like I said, there are shows. There's the Warrior Warriors of Wakanda show. It's called Avengers Assemble with Black Widow and Black Panther. And basically... Um, the Taskmaster comes and gets something and they have to get it back from the Taskmaster, but instead of it just being Black Widow, like her solo movie, they throw other, like, Black Panther, Black Panther in and, um, he helps her out. Because it's vibranium that the, they stole and so it's from Black Panther, so I guess that's why they added him in there. I just like that's cool the way they're teaming up. The Avengers Campus is set, like, in its own almost universe because everyone's still alive like none of the Avengers are like dead like they would be in the present day of the MCU where like we don't have Iron Man anymore we don't have Steve as Captain America anymore etc so um the shows are pretty fun though and then they have the Doctor Strange show which is like the mystic arts thing which is really cool oh and they have the Guardians of the Galaxy dance off which is right outside of their ride um and it's super fun uh I didn't get to see that show or Doctor Strange's show, but I saw the other two shows and they were pretty cool. Um, Spider-Man, he just kind of swings on by. Oh, and Spider-Man show. And he, this is like the infamous swing that you'll probably see all over TikTok where he like flips over, which is an animatronic, if you don't know. Uh, that's not a real person. They would never do that with a real person, but the fact that they made an animatronic that can literally like Flip, o flip over buildings is pretty cool. So his show is really short and cute and he does it right over the um, Web Slingers ride area. So that's the thing about the Avengers Campus area. It's small, but it's big at the same time because it's it doesn't take up a ton of space, but like you kind of have to go into these nook and cranny little alleyways to see the entire land. It doesn't have very many gift shops. In fact, it has just like a little Avengers Campus like pod set up outside. It has the Web Slinger store and of course the Guardians of the Galaxy store, which is at the exit of that ride. The Web Slinger store, it's called um, Web Supplies. Um, that one's at the exit of Web Slingers. Um, and then they have the Avengers Campus Superstore outside of Avengers Campus that has more merchandise if you want more merchandise. But most of the stuff is available in the land, um, most of it. Uh, I do believe I've seen that the Avengers um, building where the Quinjet sits on top of in the land is becoming a store as well. Uh, so that's really exciting. Um, I'm not sure about that, so don't quote me on that. But that's that would be really cool. If that happens because I feel like they could use more stores because there's a lot of Avengers a lot of merchandise a character meet area might would be cool like for Iron Man to not be like by a wall outside maybe I don't know maybe a Thanos meet and greet no, I'm just kidding <laughs> 
I don't think they would bring out the animals. But another cool thing about this area is because Disneyland and Disney California Adventure are more up to date with staying up to date with their new stuff, anytime there's a new show, you usually get to meet a character from the show for a limited time. Like they had the Scarlet Witch come out for Multiverse of Madness, Nick Fury came out around Secret Invasion, Shang-Chi came out for Shang-Chi. Like all these movies when they come out once the, after the land being opened, they get some time as a limited time character that you get to see. Whereas the other ones are there like all the time. So like, for example, we just got the Echo show. Probably soon we'll get an Echo meet and greet, which will be really cool because all about the ASL, because that is a wonderful character for that community. I am going to talk about that show on Monday on my other podcast, Pop Culture with Maddie Lanner. If you want to go check that out, um, I'll link the podcast in the description here on Spotify. Um, but just to sum it up on my opinions, um, on the character itself, not the show. I think Echo is a really cool character. Uh, her name is Maya Lopez, and she is a young, deaf Chakata, spoiler alert, a little bit, not really, um, Indian, um, who uh, lost her mother in a car crash and um, par part of her leg, and so she's an amputee as well. And so she does a lot of ASL, in the show and I think the representation for ASL is significantly higher in Echo than it was in Hawkeye where I felt like it was all that one dude who did it and Clint did it in one scene but like everybody's like she's like reading lips all the time and I really like the the giving lots of ASL uh the treatment to ASL in the show I think it's a wonderful thing that people are becoming more aware of and I love that the MCU is being inclusive to it and that they have characters uh, like Maya Lopez. And I hope that we keep getting more great characters of different variety of backgrounds in the MCU. Anyway, moving on. So, uh, rides, shows, stores. Oh, food. Everybody's favorite thing to do in any themed area is what kind of food do they have? So... Avengers Campus took it to a whole new level with food to me because they are great at their theming. So they said, okay, so we have this character, Hank Pym, who has these like shrinking and growing particles that can make people either shrink or grow. Why don't we use that to make either really big food or really small food? And so they made a whole restaurant called Pym's Test Kitchen where he literally does exactly that. So they have the kids' meals are like the shrinked portions and the adult meals are like the enlarged portions. And so they have like a huge giant pretzel, they have a huge giant chicken sandwich, they have a bunch of great stuff. Um, this place is open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I had breakfast here, only breakfast here. I never got to have another meal here. We were only there two days. We were all over the place trying to do all the stuff. So it's fair. Um, but it was pretty good breakfast. I always have a problem when I eat breakfast, so I ended up eating a shawarma wrap, which I'll talk about in a minute. But um, I thought it was good. We got the cinnamon mini, the cinnamon toast, which is like a cinnamon roll essentially, but like in the form of like a little piece of, I don't even know. Um, I'll have a picture of it if you watch the video. But um, I, we decided to get this, me and my mom, and share it. I was just going to get the kids one, and I kind of wish we'd got the kids one and just got, like, another, like, little side or of something, because this was, like, ridiculously sweet, and it was hard to eat. So, but I didn't get to try food here throughout the day. I also did try their photon or proton punch. I can't remember. I think it's proton punch. Which is just grenadine and like lemonade and uh, whatever. But you get the little pipe bet and you get to like put how much you want in it, stir it up. It's really cool. Um, I love the theming here for the drinks and everything. They do change out some of their food menu items at some of these places. So um, this one though, I think it's pretty much the same. But they do have a different cold brew quite often. And I did try the cold brew that they had when I was there. I don't know what it is there now, but when I was there, it was the cookies and cream one. It was pretty cool. Another favorite thing that I have about Disneyland, the cold brews everywhere, because I'm a cold brew gal. I love cold brew. 
I like iced coffee more than hot coffee and I find that when they make cold brews like that they're super sweet they're literally the way I like them I'm not like the subtly sweet kind of person I want it sweet give me all the sweets which is probably another reason why that breakfast ended up being too much for me also in the land is shawarma palace they have two locations one you can mobile order from one you cannot one is by the one you can't is by guardians the other one is like right outside of uh like dr strange's show almost area uh, which kind of made me mad because i didn't know it was right there and i walked all the way to like the guardians ride one to go get my shawarma wrap but one night the last night for dinner but it ended up being fine because there was a really long line at the one right there where i was at and the one by guardians had nobody in line and so it was kind of nice at the same time <laughs> like yeah i walked way too far and i got too many steps but i got my shawarma wrap way faster so <laughs> worth it but yeah so the one by the guardians ride is um and the other one they pretty much have the same menu they have a breakfast shawarma wrap it's called the breakfast shawarm up I think and it's pretty fun uh it comes with the spicy sauce i didn't have it but it's basically plant-based meat and eggs and, and a wrap it's really good really filling really wholesome um awesome sauce you gotta love it um and then for the rest of the day they have two they have the victory falafel one which is the plant-based shawarma wrap with meat and then they have a chicken one and i tried the chicken one and it's pretty good too um and I think they sell like, they sell like bottled sodas and you can sometimes get like cool like um, drink holders. Like I think they had like the Iron Man um, Infinity Stone gauntlet thing at one time that like holds your drink for you. But like I was flying home so even if I wanted any of that stuff I wasn't gonna be able to probably carry it home. So I just opted out. But they do have those cool souvenirs if you're interested. They have a lot of cool souvenirs in Avengers Campus. And I also was planning on building a droid, so I knew I was going to be taking up space regardless. And we ended up shipping that home, thank God. All right, um, other food. So they have right next to Pim's Test Kitchen, they have Pim Tasting Lab. Now Pim Tasting Lab is basically the bar of Avengers Campus. And the one thing they did better here than they did in Star Wars, it's a free-for-all quick service stand. You do not have to have a reservation to get a drink. I appreciate this significantly now it doesn't really have anything on the menu that isn't alcoholic I don't think I think the entire menu is alcohol so it is limiting people whereas Oka's Cantina like you can bring your kids because they have non-alcoholic drinks if you want a non-alcoholic drink though at Avengers Campus go to Pim Test Kitchen they have the Pinko Dolce something I, I don't know what it's called I don't think it's Dolce it's the it's the drink from the Incredible Hulk they have that they have the Proton Punch they have fun drinks over there. You want an alcoholic drink, you don't have kids, Pim Test Kitchen. No, Pim Tasting Lab. Pim Tasting Lab, Pim Test Kitchen. So similar name, I, I screwed up. Now I think they change up the menu every so often here because I remember when we went, it was around Guardians 3 being out. So they kind of had menu options related to that. So like they had the Zarg Nuts and they had this espresso martini kind of thing called R&D Martini fun um i tried one drink from here you get this cool souvenir cup uh which i really appreciate and so that's why i wanted to drink here more often than i did so i could keep getting cups and collect them um but i also went with a bunch of people i was hoping to get cups from as well but they don't drink so i only got one cup on my way home so i'm definitely getting more if i ever get to go back um but uh, they, uh, it's like a little beaker and it's a plastic cup and it has like the little logo. It's really cute. Um, if you're watching the video, it's probably over here on the side. Um, I, um, I can't remember which one I tried. The experiment, I think. It's spicy. I didn't expect it to be spicy. And it had tequila, so it was like, whoa. It was a whole experience that I don't know how to describe. <laughs> so yeah, that's that place. And then they have finally Terran Treats. Terran Treats is over by the Guardians ride as well. And it's Guardians of the Galaxy themed. So they have the two things that are there year round, which one's like a tro thing, one's a little um it's like the power it's like the power orb, but like a treat form. I don't remember. I wanted to try it, but I also got scared because it was raspberry, and I finally figured out that it's raspberry I don't like when it comes to fruits. So I was like, 
and then they had the when I went they had this cosmic disturbance churro it's right here if you're watching the video um oh my god it's a churro it's got blue curacao sauce it's got freeze dried skittles it was so good I don't know if they still have it probably not that's probably one of the things that like was limited and they come out with new things all the time because I'd never seen it there before but that was so good I got it on my way out of DCA going to Disneyland because yeah I park hopped duh I don't know why you wouldn't park up at Disneyland. They're right across from each other. It's like the easiest thing in the world. <laughs> park hopping at Disneyland is the only acceptable place to park up. Like Disney World? Eh. Disneyland? Yes. So, somehow it's only been 20 minutes that I've covered pretty much everything in Avengers Campus. Which doesn't surprise me because like I said, that land isn't as big as some of the other lands that they have nearby. So, I decided um, at the end of this video I would talk about... Some other fun little things. So just a friendly reminder, I am a travel agent and I can actually book your Disney vacations for you. So if you are listening to this podcast and you didn't know that, you should head over to at Maddie World at your feet on Instagram, Facebook, etc. And um, scroll through my posts if you want, fill out a booking form link in my bios there. And we can book, I can book your trip for you. You can message me. Um, I try my best to post about current offers at Disney World, whatever I can. Um, but I thought I would tell you guys a few right now if you're listening. Um, I don't know of any for Disneyland right now, but I know Disney Cruise Line, you could get 50% off of your deposit. And I think that one's running low on time for how long you can do that for. Um, and it's basically summer trips this year. Um, Disney World has a couple. The Disney Plus subscriber offer, if you are a Disney Plus subscriber, is that you can get a free dining plan with a four-day, four-night vacation at Disney World. Um, they have 35% off of rooms, um, and they have, if you want more information, I've posted about those on my Instagram at Maddie World at your feet. It's the kids play and dine 50% off or something for Disney World as well. I don't know any Disneyland offers, like I said. Uh, but news for Disneyland, of course, um, it looks like we're getting uh, maybe an earlier date for Tiana's Bayou Adventure. I'm not sure, though, if that was Disney World or Disneyland. Uh, if you follow Megan the Millennial on TikTok, she goes to Disney like every day because she's a magic key holder. It's a pass holder, by the way, if you didn't know. Um, oh, that's the news. So Disneyland magic keys are on sale again. That's the news. Uh, and I can book your just hotel rooms if you are a magic key holder. I don't have to book your tickets as well. Uh, it's the same for Disney World. If you're an annual pass holder, I can just book a room. Like, I don't have to book your tickets. Um, oh, and there's also a Florida resident ticket offer that I'm posting about today at Maddie World at your feet. Where I think you can get a two-day ticket for $200 and a three-day ticket for $219. Uh, I'm not quite sure on uh, the accuracy of that, but it's posted, so you can go find out for yourself. At Maddie, we're all at your feet. This is crazy ending here. Um, yeah, just to wrap it all up, I think next week I'm going to talk about Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, because I want to keep in with the lands until I can move on to something else. But, uh, I don't know. I... Also wanted to ask you guys, if you are listening to this podcast, if you made it all the way to the end of this video, let me know what you guys think about this podcast, but also let me know a topic you might want me to talk about. I personally think a t great topic would be walking you guys through the My Disney Experience app. Like one day I don't film myself and I screen record my phone and I talk to you guys on a recorded podcast and you can get the uploaded video on YouTube, hopefully. Um, and I can teach you guys how to use the My Disney Experience app. If anyone is interested in that, uh, please let me know because I actually think that would be very beneficial to a ton of people because that app can be a little confusing if you've never used it before, I'm sure. Um, uh, but yeah, I'm gonna talk about Star Wars Galaxy's Edge for sure next week and I will talk about droid building as well as lightsaber building because I have done those two things. So I have a big topic of conversation for Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. So stay tuned. Mm -hmm.